Hey, everybody. Uh, this is Josh. And this is Jacob. Welcome to Hey Man. Is that a shadow? What? On my shirt, is that a shadow? Yeah, you do have a little bit of a shadow. Yeah. Hey, just so you know, when you hit go live, my thing immediately jumped to 30 seconds. So I'm going to be. Your 30 seconds. What does your thing say right now? 50 seconds. So mine says 30. Yeah, mine literally started at 30 seconds for some reason. That's so weird, right? Yeah, I don't know what happened. And how close Um, are you to your camera right now? Why does it always look like you're so much closer to your camera? I'm like a foot away from my camera. How close are you to yours? Uh, I don't know. I mean, should I say this? Well, it's probably just a different camera. Like yours is probably a little more of a wide angle. So it's probably got a different... Look to it. Mine is the built-in one. Uh, mine is the darkness. Is there something oh, for the is. light? Is it the computer? Yeah. Hey, talk amongst yourselves. Ready? Go. Why? Where are you going? Well, don't not talk, dude. Well, I was confused on why you left because you didn't answer. Anywho. Well, all you know is that I left, so if you can't just sit there and do nothing. Yeah, I was waiting for a response, though, because I asked a question, and then you didn't respond. So I was about to start talking, and then you started yelling at me. What's going on? God. God. Oh. Oh. Um, how you doing? Good, man. I'm just, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're getting ready to move. So I have just – this room is just filled with a lot of boxes. How well, like what percentage are you done? Well, I have well, all my shoes for two weeks, right? Correct. But you know, the last time we moved, we did it poorly. So I want to make sure I don't do it poorly this time. Plus, I was also supposed to be gone for like nine days in a row coming up, but I'm not going to be with you in Tennessee now. So it gives me a lot more time to do things that I need to do. Yeah. What does that mean you um, moved poorly? How do you do that? Oh, I, you know, I had a month to move out of that Hollywood place. I really didn't start looking at it and boxing things up and wrapping shit up until like two or three days before. Is most of your boxes clothing, personally? Well, no. So for our clothing, we don't actually fold it up and put them in boxes. We lay them on the hangers, and then you put garbage bags over your clothes while they're on the hangers. And then you just take those off. It's like you can fit like five to ten at a time. And then you take it off, and then you just put it on the truck like that. And then that's how you hang up your clothes. Just put them back up with are you. Are you bringing any of those racks? Why? What racks? You know, like a rack that you hang clothes on. Like a clothing rack? Yeah, that's what it's called. Like, like one on wheels? Yeah. We didn't have any of those. Oh, okay. I, I've thought about it. We're probably going to get some for the new place because I assume we're going to turn at least – there's going to be some storage of clothing in one of the rooms for sure. Um. Because the closets aren't massive, but it is, you know, it's still a three bedroom house. So it's going to be great. Kind of crazy, dude. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. I mean, you, all right. All right. So today on the pod, we want to talk about it, hey guys. We're going to talk about our trip in Austin. Um, Jacob has been teasing me about something that happened to him twice. Yes. I've been waiting to tell you this because the, you kept pushing back the podcast. And I was like, yeah, I, I can do it any day this week. Like, I'm good. And so I've been waiting to tell this story. Well, I think uh, we hope. should start with that. Yo, yeah, uh, I'm not. We're not talking about anything else before I get this off my chest. Yeah, I think we should start with it, and then I'll get into whatever I want to get into. But I'm so, dying to hear what this is. So it was Sunday, and so Sunday when we were done, we were in Austin, Texas this past weekend, and um, I was flying back at like 9 a.m. So it wasn't super early or super late, but you know, you know me, I'm a I'm a sleeper on both of my on like on my planes. And I didn't realize that I wasn't a direct flight back to LA. It was one in Albuquerque and then Albuquerque home. Were you stopped in Albuquerque? Yeah, I was in Albuquerque, not Phoenix. Huh. All right. Never been to that airport. I've been on the outside of it, dropping people off at it, but I've never been inside that airport. I wonder if I have. I bet you I have, but I don't remember. No, I mean, maybe last time you were in Albuquerque, you were driving though. That's true. But I did fly into Albuquerque to do a show at a casino with Elton. Got it. Anywho, yeah. so 
I also just happened to get some new headphones for my birthday for my girlfriend. Those wireless Bose headphones. It's like you just turn them on and the noise canceling is already there. Like you don't even have to have music on. They're the best headphones I've ever had in my entire life. They are so good that when I when the plane landed in Albuquerque, I didn't notice. And so I was still asleep by the time everybody was off the plane. Were you the only person on the plane? And I wake up to the flight attendants tapping my leg, and I wake up, and I'm like, hello. And I look around real quick, and there is nobody on the plane. And they're like, hey, just wanted to make sure that you were getting off here. And I was like, we're in Albuquerque? They're like, yeah. I was like, yeah, well, I'm getting off. I appreciate it. So I get off, and I go find my gate. I actually, funny enough, it was like gate A11. And I look up at the gate that I had just come out of. It was A11. I was like, oh, great. So I'm already at my gate. Don't need to go anywhere, which was a great coincidence. Right. I'm flying now from Albuquerque to Burbank. I put these headphones on again. And I was like, you know, I could just, I'll just take another quick nap. Once again, we land in Burbank and I don't feel the plane land. I don't hear anything. I wake up for the second time with a couple people left on the plane being woken up by the crew again. And they were like, hey, are you on the next flight out of here to, to, uh, to Detroit? And I was like, fuck no. I was like, are we in Burbank already? They're like, yeah. I was like, God, this has happened to me two flights in a row. And I've been, and I was like, no, no, I'm getting off. I am not going to Detroit. So let's not board them. Let me get out of here. And they're like, okay, cool. We just wanted to check because you were knocked out. And I go, yeah, these headphones are better than, better than I thought they were. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah I, got, I got woken up twice by the crew because I, I bet you this is what I look like too. Oh, you definitely had your mouth open. A hundred percent chance you had your mouth I looked, open. I looked dead probably. Yo, dude, I, that has only happened to me once. And that's a great ad for Bose headphones, by the way. So good. But it's Bose only happened to me good. once. I over-medicated myself. Um, and I had some um, – I think it was when I was still taking Xanax on planes. And so I had taken a Xanax and a hundred milligram edible. Ouch. And I was, oh, now, you know what surprises me about that first flight, Austin to Albuquerque, to be that asleep. It's only like, what is it, like an hour 15 flight? No, Austin, it was probably, it was probably, it was probably an hour 30, hour 45, because the next one was also about an hour 45. Okay. So it, it yeah. wasn't that long of a flight. But it's weird that like, None of the movement woke you up. It it had you so deep in sleep. Were you high? No. But, but dude, and by the way, was and the Austin airport wasn't jam packed. Well, the uh, the lines for like Southwest and everything else to like check your bags and check in was jamming. But I was only there for thirty six hours, so I came with a double bag. So I yeah. just walked straight to. Yeah. Straight to security. How amazing was Terry Black's in Austin, Texas? Good God. Uh, no, you, I'm not wearing my, I'm not wearing my hat. No. Yo, that beef rib was. Yo, did so you so didn't cool. see what I did. You didn't see what I did. I did because we also ordered for the second show in uh, Austin. We ordered Taco Cabana. We ordered those fresh tortillas, some guac, and some queso. I opened up a tortilla, pulled apart some of the beef rib, laid that down, spread some guacamole on top of it, and then poured queso over it and just ate that beef rib taco. I had six of them. You did in the green room? By the time I came on stage with you. That's amazing. I ate a lot of them. Yo, dude. Hey, Andy. It was – it might have been – you know, for those out of context, Terry Blacks is a barbecue place. But this 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 sentence out of context might sound weird. Best plate of meat I've ever seen in my entire life. Better than that one in in uh, Australia. A hundred percent. Not even close. Yo, it's a different if it's, it's a different type. One was a little more high end, and one was just a southern barbecue. And for me, I have a preference. Do you um like when you're asleep when you're asleep on the plane with your mouth open? Which you know you had your mouth open. Oh, I woke up and I was like, and everything. Every time the first thing I do when I go when I wake up and I know I'm asleep on the plane is I close my mouth because I have the worst cotton mouth ever. 
because I know my my mouth is just wide open. Do you know how many pictures I have on my phone of you sleeping with your mouth open? Yeah, a lot. Because it started on the Josh Wolf show. Mm-hmm. You, you know how many, how many videos I have of me? You know how many how many videos I have of me scaring you? Yeah, I know. But these videos, you know that video of you asleep. One of my favorite things. So on the, I had a talk show for six weeks called the Josh Wolf Show, and I Jacob was one of the obviously people that I hired, and um, he was a PA on the show. And for those of you, PA is a production assistant, so it's kind of the lowest level. It's your entry level into production. Yeah. And but one of the benefits of having your dad be the host is, you know, I had my own office. Really get in trouble. I had my own office, and every now and then I'd walk into my office, and this dude would be straight up mouth open, asleep, snoring yep. on my couch. It was my first ever job. So I didn't know what getting up at 7 a.m. and working 12 hours felt like. Uh, you falling asleep, you asleep. I would bring everybody in the office, like Brad and Tom, and I'd be like, look at this guy. And they were like, must be good to have your dad be the boss. Yeah, good, good time, good time. Yeah, you, we, you were on. How many episodes? You, you were on at least one episode a week, weren't you? I feel uh, like you were on more like, than that. It, I guess it kind of depended. Like, I, it depended what was on the, the like what you had already for pranks and stuff set up for like you know bits and whatnot. Um, but I was on the panel once. Um, I know I was on that Fourth of July episode where I came out dressed up as Uncle Sam and did some cartwheels. Um, we did that thing where we. Jousted with pool noodles and segways. Um, I kicked you in the leg. Um, you got stabbed that one time. You uh, also had to catch gross things. Oh, I caught lettuce in a in a bucket on my head. Yeah, that I um, shot. What did I shoot those out of? A, ca- a a giant slingshot. I feel like. Oh no, no, it was a t-shirt cannon. That's right. You also we had the twenty dollars chef on. To teach you how to make meals. Oh yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. What was your what was your what was your favorite? I can tell you what my favorite bit from that show was. Like oh oh, there was also that one where you threw uh, balloons filled with paint at me, <laughs> and I was legitimately strapped. You were to strapped a to a wall. So you should have made it spin. Away. You should have made it spin. I was throwing. Was I throwing or hitting? Throwing. You were throwing balloons filled with paint at me. And the first, the one right before he hits me in the face, I dodged because I was like, you're going to hit me right in the face. And they're filled with paint. And he was like, stop moving. And so then he throws one again directly and it hits me right in the face. Oh, and there's one that went in your mouth. Yeah, and in my eyes and all that. And I was like, all right, we got to stop. The slow-mo of that where you could see it hit you in the face – and then there's a beat, and then you just go, and yeah. the paint comes flying out of your mouth. Yeah, I did also have a face mask on, so that was yes. yeah. But yeah, it, that was that was gross. I it was really not a fun time for me. Um, no, I mean, but the you whole know, show the, the show was fun, but that was like one moment that was just like for like thirty seconds was not fun. No, dude, the paint, the a balloon filled with paint in the mouth. Yeah, or the, the face, mouth, face, the whole whole shebang. But we did that also was, use oh, no, dude. We did, First, I was hitting them off of a tee. Remember? And it wasn't were, working. But the, but the clip that we have is just you throwing them. Yeah, 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 yeah. You were hitting like small like sponges or baseball size like things at me that were filled. You couldn't hit the balloon filled with paint, dude. That wouldn't go anywhere. That's right. It was like a spon- – It was like a – like a sponge ball. Right, 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 right. Okay. Yeah. Like uh, those little pool toys, you know, the little balls that you throw into the water. Yeah, the noodles um, and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. Um, I think my I think my favorite was uh, the segue jousting with the with the pool noodle. That was a ton of fun. Yeah, that that one made me laugh. Yeah, that was a ton of fun. I, I one of my the favorite thing I did on the show was hiding in that trash can and jumping out uh, dressed as a gorilla, and as people walked into work, yeah, and it was crazy, scared everybody except Sarah Tiana. Who just went, hey. I, I mean, I jumped she out. Didn't of even, the trash. She didn't even flinch. She didn't flinch, dude. No. Not even. Ah, nothing. You know what I would have done? 
Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I have that on tape. Handed from here to eternity. Yeah, I'm so glad I knew about it too and didn't have to walk into that because that was a good thing here. That was a good thing about going into work with him as early as it did, or in, in general. I knew when everything was happening. Yeah. So I knew the things to avoid or the people to lure into those traps. Like I always yeah. knew what was happening, where it was happening, and who it was happening to. So that I was completely – not completely, but I was pretty much unscathed when it came to those bits. I'll tell you, man. That was the first thing – that was the first thing in Hollywood – when that show got canceled, that affected, that truly affected me. Mm -hmm. Like sure. I've had shows that I was on cancel or not, or, or shows that I sold never get made or, right. you know, I had a bunch of life story, you know, TV shows and scripts written and, you know, deals and shit like that. But that cancellation of the Josh Wolf show really hit me kind of hard. Mm -hmm. I remember. I remember. Yeah. It. I don't know how long. It felt like a couple months, but it was six months probably. You think so? Yeah, I remember I'd Facetime you, and you still hadn't shaved since I left for college. And Wait. I was like. It was, was the summer that? of 2015. I left. So after that, after our show got canceled, to a month and a half later, I left for college. That's right. So that was also like a double life thing for you at Huge. once. Both. So it was two very large things happening in your life also at once. But when I, I, when I came back for Thanksgiving around that time and like towards Christmas, like when I came back officially, you – you flip the switch. Yeah. Well, you know what? I I start I it took me a while to get perspective, but the perspective was Don't be sad it's over, be glad it happened. Yeah. The perspective was when I was a kid, I always dreamed of having a talk show called the Josh Wolf Show, and it happened. And you so did. like it's not that it's it's not that it didn't happen, it's that you did it. it. Happened. And, and like the odds of it happening, the amount of people that have had their own talk show in Hollywood is not huge. Yeah. The fact that it made the air, you know, I had to stop looking at saying only six weeks and being like, I got six weeks, dude. I got should, I mean, it should have been more. It should have been more to this day. Yeah. I, you know, looking back on it, it wasn't the right, it wasn't the right network. No, a hundred percent not the right from the start, but, but it, Definitely should have been more. It was so much fun, man. It, it was, was so much fun. fun. That yeah, 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 that really that was a good little perspective for me, you know, mm -hmm. to just kind of go. Hey. By the way, dude, speaking of, of um, perspective, I and I don't like. I just got to talk this. I don't get this. Oh, by the way, we we watched Avatar last night. Oh, the new one. Did you see it? No, I haven't seen it. Yeah, I mean, yeah, dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I don't three understand. And half, it's three and a half hours, right? This is the thing. People are like you got to see it in the theaters, and I'm like, fuck you. I oh, wouldn't no. have made it in the theaters. Your mom and I watched half downstairs. We walked the dog. I had an edible. We watched the second half upstairs. Seems like a good. Move. That felt good. But yeah. I will tell you, twenty minutes into the movie, I stopped it. I turned to your mom. I go. How are they going to fill three more hours? I was like, I know what the story is. So what? what do, but I bet you visually the theater was crazy. Oh, I bet. I bet you like seeing it like a Dolby, like the Dolby theater would probably be outstanding. But What's everybody your... was like, go see it in 4D. I was like, where the chairs move? And they were like, yeah. And I was like, fuck no. Also, here's my also here's my big thought. Like, sorry to anybody whose feelings this hurts. I don't really care. If you like 3D or 4D movies or anything where you have to wear sunglasses to watch a film, so overrated. I I hate 3D and 4D, whatever it is. I'm like, not I'll go, sure what you mean by 4D. Like, you feel wind and shit. And, and they have 4D theaters where the chair moves and you have to wear glasses, so it's like interactive almost. Okay, I would try that. I'm I, not in for it. 
It's, it's just a lot going on. Like I'm going to watch a movie. I don't I don't need to be I have to wear a seatbelt. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I don't I, I, like if someone if they're like someone's getting thrown off the cliff, I don't want to get thrown off the cliff with them literally in my seat. Right, you know, like, that's you don't I want to for that. saliva on your face. Yeah, yeah, no, no, I'm good. I'm good. Like I, I can go do the tram at at Universal Studios, but I don't need it in a theater. Like I I I um yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I'm saying? Like it just seems like a lot for no reason mind, whatsoever. I don't mind 3D. I'm just it hurts my head. Out a way where I don't have to wear the glasses. It hurts my head. It hurts my head. Yeah, I just want we got to figure out a way where I don't have to wear the glasses. But besides that, I don't I don't mind the 3D. Like last night watching Avatar, I was like, oh, I bet you. And definitely Avatar High. My definitely. buddy said he saw it on acid. That would be crazy. Sounds outstanding. Dude, I, I and you know this, you were there. When I took mushrooms for the first time in like six months on Friday night. I'm so <laughs> glad you listened to me though. He was like, I'm going to take two of these. And I was like, please don't. He was like, why? And I was like, because you haven't done it in X amount of time. One. And two, like these are the strong ones. You know, I was like, for the, okay. So for those of you who don't know, like a little quick mushroom education, right? If you get mushrooms that look like your regular mushrooms that are like brown or like kind of light brown or goldish, those ones are good. But you're going to have to take the full dose in order to really feel it. Can I jump in? I find those to be more giggly. Tell you the truth. See, that's where I disagree too. When you find the ones that are like white, the stems are like really white with a brown cap and they look kind of like, I don't know how to say, but bluish. Blue. Like, you, you know what I mean? Blue, right? Those are the ones that were if you take half what you would usually take in the brown skinny ones, half is good. If you take the full dose of what you want to take, it's going to be double what you think. Like they're wow. extra strong and it's no. a lot of energy. It's a lot of hey. energy and a lot of like just woof. The penis envy kind. I love how they Which call it. the albino kind. Yeah, I like how they call it. Penis, it makes me laugh whoever – Whoever named that, that is a dude yeah, who clearly did not like the way the head of his penis looked because he picked it and that mushroom and was like, man, I wish my dick looked like that. That's what, that's whoever named that. Or it well, was maybe a- the mushrooms, maybe the mushrooms made him envy having a different dick. That's what I'm saying. No, no, no. Just like the taking of it, not the looking at it, the taking of them. You think he took mushrooms and looked at his dick and didn't like it? Yeah, maybe. What that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, like I, I don't know. Like, trip ever. It sounds awful. Um, that would be yeah. terrible to take mushrooms and then look at your dick and be like, I don't like this. Yeah, it is a bummer because then it's just something you have to live with, sober and fucked up. Yeah, that would be a rough one. I always yeah. assumed it was because it was because of how the. Wait, I'm gonna move that down a little bit. Mushrooms. How the what's that? How they were shaped. How yeah, how they were shaped, but I never it never entered my mind that they called it penis envy because the dude ate mushrooms, tripped, and decided he didn't like the shape of his penis. It's possible. Did you hear about that woman who has two vaginas? What? I mean, I've heard of people being born with both a penis and a vagina, but like two vaginas. Oh, right. There was an article about this woman who had two vaginas, and I think I what? think what I read, it was just an article and I didn't get too deep into it because I that is a rabbit hole. I don't need to go down. But I think it said something like she used one for OnlyFans or porn and one for her husband. What? I mean, I guess that seems kind of valid. Does it? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Like every guy would be like, "Well, your your wife's a porn star. There's so many guys have been in been inside her." And you're like, "Yeah, but not that one. The other one is for me." Yeah, but like, are you okay with no? I mean, either way, I'm not okay with your wife's other vagina. I can't believe I just said that. Your wife. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Vagina. Like, I mean, I as long as one is just for me, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess I understand his head, his like where his head is at in this one. I don't agree with it, but like I understand his logic. So you would add like a sign out in front of one that said Jacob's vagina, and a sign out the side of the other one that just said the other one. 
No, just one when she went to work, one was just like covered with a chastity belt. And then like that one was obviously I I I know no zone. And then right. the other one, they're like, yeah. And then when she's not with them, the other one is locked up so that I don't accidentally use the one that's not for me. And then I use the other one. What I'm really curious about is if they're side by side, if they're like front and yeah, back. Yeah, that's a good question too because like – they stacked? I feel like they'd be stacked. So it goes vagina, vagina, butthole? What if it went I vagina, mean, butthole, vagina? That's what I was just going to say. That would be – what if it went butthole, vagina, vagina? Like everything was back, all backwards. If the butthole was in the front. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, I think if this I This might have been the darkest we've ever gone on our podcast, not going to lie. Is this dark? I don't know. It's just definitely something we haven't talked about before, though. I'll tell you this. I mean, you know there was that dude with two dicks. More than one dude, but that okay, dude. Yeah. Oh, yo. This guy had double, like double eight inch dongs. Damn. I know, dude. Like, bro, had 16 inches on him. Fuck. God hit copy paste on the wrong fucking guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What the fuck, man? First of all, I'm going to tell you straight up I do not want two dicks. And I definitely don't want two eight inch dicks. That sounds like a lot of hassle. Right? Does does he need like custom underwear? How does he wear a cup? Well, I don't think that's. Did he play uh, sports ever? I don't know, dude. You, that's a great question. He says one is gay and one is straight. One dick is gay and one is straight. That means he's bisexual. I don't think it's possible how that. That's not. not there's so, not one or the other, and it's not. Yeah, no. no that yeah. doesn't. Your your dick doesn't. Have, that means your dick has a brain of its own. That. Doesn't well, I mean, maybe no, but no, no, not, not don't, right. don't try to give credit to it because it's weird and you want it to but, be true. I mean, if I had if I had two dicks, I would do funny things like I would tie eight inch dicks, like I would tie, I would make a pretzel. I feel like he could, I feel like he could make a balloon animal out of both yeah, of them, dude. I mean, I would do some fun tying in knots, I would dress them up, craziest, craziest magic show of all time. Oh, dude, I would do, like, fighting dragons. Ga, 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 ga. I mean, at least I would have fun with it. But two eight-inch dongs sounds... It just sounds cool. like more of a hassle. Like, I'll tell you something else, man. I, I look at yeah. dude. You know, you, when you're a younger dude, you may think one thing. But at my age, when, you know, looking back now and thinking about, like, guys like Ron Jeremy... Yo, that seems like a burden, like a straight up burden, just something normal size. I'm happy with it. Hey, you want to know something really funny? I met Ron Jeremy. You did? Where at the comedy? Do you store? want it? I'm no, no, no. I it's someplace you would never even possibly Ooh, begin to guess. Give me. I get three guesses. I get you, five questions. Are you, five dude, questions. I'll give you twenty. Really? I, I, don't, I don't think there's. I don't think there is. I'll give you ten. I don't think there is any, any way you guess where I met him. Okay, I'll give you ten questions and or uh, and or guesses. Okay. 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 Well, this is fun. Okay. Okay. Go. Okay. Um, was it in Hollywood? Nope. Was it in a convention center? Nope. Weed store. Nope. Were you at a grocery store? Nope. Were you at a place where you buy things? No. That's fine. I, I should have asked that first. I wasted five questions. <laughs> you did waste five questions completely. Uh, so you were not in a place where you buy things? No, but that's five questions already. So I got four. You got five more. Were you in the gym? Nope. Were you at a park? Nope. Oh, no. Were you – no gym, no park. Were you in an Uber? Nope. Whoa. Well, maybe you, you, did take, you think I take Uber pool? What the fuck is going on over here? Yeah, no, I don't know. Maybe you were doing Uber pool. <laughs> no, either. never. I'd rather walk. Whoa, okay. How come? I'm not, you never know who you're going to get. I mean, you might get Ron Jeremy, which might be kind That's of a That's what I'm saying. One. 
But okay. you also have no idea who you're going to get. I've never heard like heard like a good Uber pool story. So yeah, I'm, me I'm, neither. Nobody's ever been like I'm. So, thank God I was in Uber pool. Like, you're right. Right. So I get two, two more. more. Um. Okay. Can you give me a clue that get, that takes away one of my questions? Give me a clue. It's not a public space. You're thinking very public. It's not a public thing. Were you at a house party? I was at a house, but not a house party. All right, now the last one. So I get to I have to guess now. Yeah. You were at working on that show with Carbone. No. Where were you? I met him at. <laughs> I met him at my most recent ex's parents' house. What? Apparently, her mother and him are friends. And she was like, yeah, we did a movie together. And I was like, what did you just say? She was like, no, like an actual acting movie. And I go, you do know who this man to my left is, correct? She was like, yeah. And I go, don't say movie because – Yeah, right? That that doesn't that doesn't help me or you or actually anybody in this scenario. I was like, "Can I see this movie? Like, is it decent?" And they're like, "No, yeah, it was for our like our like group of friends. They they have like because they're from England, so it's like a Brits in LA thing. So they had to make a a, a small skit or I don't know. But wait, yeah, and that older dude, what was his name?" What older dude? The older dude who was the best guy in the world who we met over at that oh, house. Oh, yeah. I can't remember his name, but that guy's a fucking uh, gent. Dude, that was the but, fucking best guy but, ever. But, yeah, so so that's where I met Ron Jeremy. She was like, we were in a movie together, and I was like, pause. What? Yeah. What's the name of that movie? <laughs> no, I actually don't want to know what's up. <laughs> well, yeah, that's I, t- I, I told you. I could have given you 20 guesses, and you still would have never guessed it. Yeah, I wouldn't have guessed her house. Mm-hmm. Wow. Is there anybody – like who's in your top four people that you want to meet? Ever? Ooh. Let me think about this too. Ever? Uh, De- dead or alive or currently alive? Let's just go right now. J. Cole? All right, should we go back and forth? Yep. You say J. Cole? Mm-hmm. Uh, the Rock. It's a good one. You know what? He just seems like a good dude. I'm, I'm not mad at that. You know, um, he seems like a good dude. Oh, fucking Adam Driver for the memories, just because I, I look like him and I'd love a picture side by side with him. Miley Cyrus. You've already met Miley. But, like... Like, have like, a chance like, to talk to. Okay, okay. Um, Are they saying just meet, like shake hands? I don't know. You said meet, not yeah. That like, implies like J. Cole, J. Cole, J. Cole is someone. J. Cole is someone I'd like to sit and like have a conversation with for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who did I? Who did I just say before that? Uh, J. Cole. No, J. Cole. I said somebody else because I went first. Oh yeah, who did you say? Didn't you say J. Cole first? I said J. Cole, and then you said... The Rock. The Rock. And then I said... Somebody, and then you said Miley. Isn't that weird that neither one of us can remember? Hold on. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Uh, You said J. Cole. I said The Rock. You said... Is that crazy? Did we both just have a stroke? <laughs> Wait. Well, who, else thought, who else is on your list? I'm so focused on this right now, there is no list. <laughs> Dude. This is crazy. Did you say okay. a second one? Why you else would you have said Miley Cyrus? Right. Did you say Kendrick? Nope. I have no idea who you said. Was it a soccer player? Nope. Actor? Oh, that might be next, though. Actor? I don't remember. I don't think so. 
Uh, who, who did I say? Wow, dude, this is embarrassing for both of us. Well, we can't continue until I figure out what I said, so I know. It's just the entire. You know, it's never going to pop back in my brain, so it's all on you. It might pop back in my brain. Though. I'm trying to figure out where I was. You just keep talking and see if it pops back in. <sighs> Who else on your list? Um, I don't know. I'd probably like to sit and have like a conversation with LeBron. Ooh, I would say Tom Brady. That's a good one too. Yeah. Um. So that's three. Well, two for me because I don't remember who the fuck my second one was. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, God damn it. Um. What do you think? What was that noise? Oh, okay. It's just me. You get one. Um, I don't know. I mean, you obviously don't want to talk to that second person that much. I can't my hand looks. I guess not. Who is the fourth person? It would probably be like uh, uh, probably Lionel Messi or Cristiano Ronaldo. This last person is less about being a fan and more just about wanting to ask some questions. And I think it would probably be Elon Musk. Yeah, I was thinking about I was thinking about putting like Bezos or Bill Gates on there. Yo, speaking of Bill Gates, have you has you seen the picture of Bill Gates' daughter and the dude she went to prom with? No. Boy, I've never seen a bigger smile on a kid in my entire life. He was yeah, like, I just secured. Money, right? He was he was like, I just secured the biggest bag of all time. And was I've never seen a bigger smile from anybody any ever, ever. He was like, Yup, yeah, I'm here, and you're not. By the way, honorary mention Chris Pratt. Seems like no, I hear I hear he is one of the largest douchebags in Hollywood. Chris Pratt? Yeah. Notoriously. Really? No, no, for real. I hear he's one of the one, uh, not a nice person in real life. Well, that's disappointing to hear, but I, I would throw Sandler in there maybe and bump Elon Musk. Oh, I walked past Sandler and got a head nod from him when I was at Spade Show. It was fucking great. Yeah, dude, you know, we sold a movie to him and I never met. Boo. What was the movie? It was that movie. It was a true story about... Um, these kids in 1963, I think, out in Canoga Park, California. Um, the a traveling all star baseball team, 12, 13 year olds, mm. and their coach robbed a bank in every city, every different city they went to. Whoa! Excuse me, and they didn't get busted until the World Series, I guess. Dude, I think I think it was crazy. Something like six or seven of the kids on that team played Major League Baseball on some level. Well, Rick, Rick Dempsey, Robin Yount, who's a, a Hall of Famer, his brother Larry Yount. Like that team was st- – dude, to have six people off the same Little League team play Major League Baseball is fucking crazy. That was a really good 12- and 13-year-old team then. Holy shit. But we, we sold this script, dude. So me and, me and Jonathan Sheck. We met oh, in, okay. we sold it in the room, we wrote the script, and it just never got off his desk. Boo. Good. Oh, that sounds like a great – that sounds like something that should be made right now. I think Wahlberg is doing a documentary about it. Fact. Close enough. I think that's what's happening. Yeah, but, Sandler uh, – that, that episode of Sandler and Spade on, on Lights Out was one of the greater episodes of TV I've ever seen. It's my favorite. It was my favorite episode. Uh, I, oh, me too. It was also happened to be on Farley's birthday, which was crazy. That is crazy. Or the anniversary Stanley. of his passing. It was one of those, but it was just them two on a Farley specific day, which I thought was awesome. Yeah, to hear them talking was crazy. But but Sandler to me is my he he did it and does it exactly how I always envisioned myself. Right. Doing it. You're bringing your friends and family along. And, you know, he still does 
he, he still does uncut gems and shit like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. He also is who he is. He does his silly songs and he makes his silly yep. movies. And I, I feel the same way. Like, yo, I, I'm older, but I, farts are still funny. Why wouldn't I talk about it? You know? Yeah, he's he's good. He's so good at what he does in that oh, character yeah. that he plays. People are mad at him for playing the same character for 40 years. And I'm like, yeah, and he's made a gazillion dollars doing it because it's what he's good at and it's he's ridiculously funny and a legend. I don't get I don't get where the hate comes from. It's like if, if you were really good at something and you had perfected it, wouldn't you do it over and over again? But but he doesn't do the same character, he just makes movies in the same genre. I mean, you I mean look, the you guy know? in Click is the same guy in Grown Ups. You He's the same guy right now. in Happy, Happy Gilmore. That uh, – not the same guy in Happy Gilmore. Are you kidding me? Okay, Happy Gilmore is kind of like the same guy in, in Waterboy. And then and then Longest Yard is – Longest Yard is more like Click in all honesty. Now that I think about it. Dude. He does is, like he, same like same same genre, similar role. Like they're not the same, but they're pretty similar. He played a uh, somebody in prison on on Longest Yard. That's not yeah, clear. I'm I'm not talking about the exact person. I'm talking about how the character was. Did you look at the characters? The characters yeah. are the same. Well, I'll not like something. their storylines and who they are is the same. It's just like if you look at the characteristics and like the aesthetic of the person, like he's. The same. I, I and it's not it. a bag. It's not I a know. bag. I fucking I love Adam Sandler. All the movies I named could be top ten in comedy anywhere. I mean, maybe not, maybe not Longest Yard, but like Waterboy and Happy Gilmore is pretty good. But Happy Gilmore is like, next level funny, and Waterboy said, also. But like, you can't do it. Yeah. What's that? I said you can't do it. Yeah, I love it when people scream that out at my shows. Yeah, people do scream that out a lot at your shows, actually. It's so funny. You can do it! You can do it! Yeah. Um, I, by the way, I can't wait to see the footage for Friday Night Late Show. <laughs> yeah, it was great. I had a really good time. Awesome was fucking ridiculous. Yeah, your brand. Trevor was there, your brother. My, my Trevor was there. Was there. Mm-hmm. Good, good time. time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were, yeah, he was so high on mushrooms at Late Show Friday that – while we were on stage talking about something with Trevor, he was like, all right, we should get you guys off the stage. And I was like, dude, we're still talking. What, what's happening? He couldn't, he couldn't keep straight. We were talking and he was like looking around and like reacting at all the lights. And he was on a whole nother planet. The next morning we woke up, he goes, I'm so glad I listened to you and didn't take two of those. And I was like, me too. I'm taking another one and a half this tomorrow night at the John Mayer concert. You're going to a John Mayer concert. Damn. Jealous. In Palm Springs. Just know it was Jackson's favorite artist, so enjoy it even more for us, please. Thank you. Dude, I'm going to take some mushrooms. I feel like your mom and I, I was like, I don't know. I, know, I think I know two John Mayer songs. Gravity and Body in Wonderland. Um, listen to – it's an album. It's him live at the Nokia in L.A. in 2008, and it's like 16 songs. And it's all his live performance. Obviously, it was over a decade ago. But it's yeah. what Jack used to play for us. It's why it's like the only album I know through and through by John Mayer. And it's a set list. And he probably won't play all of those songs. He might play a couple. But that is like – it's it's really good. I can't wait to watch. I mean honestly oh, – dude, Where the lights are, I think, on, on Apple Music or Spotify. I think mu- music and mushrooms go – so well together. Yeah. That's why people you know do I mean? so many drugs at music festivals. Yeah. The the mushrooms in music. It, can, by the way, can I just correct that statement? Yeah. Drugs in music. I can't uh, think of, I can't think of I can't think of a drug that I've done that I haven't yeah. enjoyed listening to music. I didn't enjoy anything on Coke. So hard for me to say that. Okay, fair enough. But ecstasy. Yes. Weed, weed. yes. Mushrooms, yes. Yes, yes. Yeah. Nothing speedy, though. I, you know, the last. I, I don't understand how people do like ecstasy or something like euphoric at like an EDM concert. And it's just like, and it's just like that crazy bass. 
And yeah, you know, I've never understood that part, but when I took you understand a lot of it, I'm sure, is the lights. But ex- <laughs> I mean, look, man, when I was taking ecstasy, it was different ecstasy. But dude, what I remember the first time I took ecstasy, and I was at a place in San Antonio, I was with my friend, uh, a guy named Tim Blanchard. And uh, this is the dude, Tim. I lived with him for a summer, man. And I came home one day, and he was naked, sitting crisscross applesauce in front of the couch, eating a baked potato with one hand and drinking milk straight out of the cart. And uh, he was watching something like, I forget, some judge show. Judge Judy. And I walk in, I go, dude. And he was like, yeah, I go, what are you doing? And he looked at me like I was crazy. And he goes, I'm getting ready to go work out. And I was like, what? And you know what he said to me? Yeah, why did he sound so I, offended when you asked that? Like you I said, know. what are you dude? This guy was, let me tell you another story about it right after. I go, what are you doing on the floor? And he <laughs> said, my butthole itches. And I couldn't, he was, it, he didn't want to use his hands. So was, the cushion was too soft. So the carpet was hard enough where he could itch his asshole while sitting on the carpet and eating. I was like, you're like a dog? Are you rubbing your butthole on the carpet? He was like, no, I'm not dragging just this one spot. I'm like, but there's, is there poop on there? He was like, I hope not. Gross. Wait, he wasn't wearing underwear? Dude, naked. That Chris is- Cross applesauce. I must have missed that part. This is a guy who used to pee. Is that Paul? No, Tim Blanch. Oh. This is a guy who used to pee in Gatorade bottles and leave them by the side of his bed. He didn't like to get up in the middle of the night. And then I would ask him, I would go into his room, I'd be like, why don't you just throw those bottles away? And he was like, well, it just reminds me to drink water. I'm like, huh? That is the grossest habit ever. But he was also the guy who I took X to with for the first time. And um, I remember I was at a place called Bombay Bicycle Club in San Antonio, Texas, which is where all of us Bombay used to drink in college. Bombay! So and uh, we're playing pool. Club. Yeah. We're playing pool. And uh, I was like, I got to go to the bathroom. And he's like, okay. And as I was taking, going pee. And this was an ecstasy. It was just pure. Yeah, it was no speed, just all euphoric. You were punched and right I was just shot to the back of my head. And I was at the urinal. And I remember thinking to myself, I hope I feel like this for the rest of my life. Yeah, that's that's the that's the impression I get from X. Um, but it's different now, dude. I would never even take it now. Yeah, I'm not. I'm sticking with mushrooms and acid. And acid's even hard to come by nowadays. So, yeah, you just never yeah. know what's in the pills now. Yeah, true. Oof. You know? Um, yeah, it's it's very true. Do you still have so friends who are taking, taking pills even with the fentanyl? Uh, I don't think so. I think I've more like anybody who's taking pills has more been distance from. Um, yeah. But no, I don't think. I don't think I know anybody who's taking pills right now. Did you know anyone in high school who was taking pills? Like during high school and stuff? You mean every popular kid at Notre Dame whose names I won't name? Whose parents you know? What kind of pills were they taking? Zans. It was always it was either Zans. There's definitely some X and Molly going around. Um, really? Oh, dude. Um... Uh, towards senior year, a lot of perk thirties, uh, kids in ki- a perk, like a Percocet. Oh, why do they call them perk thirty? Because it's a Percocet that's thirty milligrams. Perk thirty, perk ten. Yeah. Bingo. I don't know uh, what is that. I knew kids at my second high school that did shit while I was there too. Um, do you ever smoke weed at school? Yeah, all the time. Oh, really? During lunch, uh. At chance? Remember when I told you? 
Yeah, remember when I told you I would get to school early to go study at like 7 a.m.? Yeah. Yeah, it was me and three friends smoking a blunt before first period. Come on. Every time. Can I be honest with you right here, right now? Yeah. It's easier for me to count the days that I didn't go to school high than I did because I was high practically my entire senior year. Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. 100%. It was probably like a 95% to 5% ratio. Like 95% of the time I was high during my first and second period. You did really well in school that year. No, I did really well in school the year before. My junior yeah. year, I got straight A's. Oh, man, maybe the I, weird- I still, I still did pretty well my senior year. Like, yeah. I, I jumped my GPA up a bunch of points, and I did well. In, sure you did. I mean, I still got a B in pre-calc. My senior year, did you I, got an stay? A, I got an A in government and econ both semesters. I got I had a TA per, period, so I was even there. I got an A in English. I got like a B in Spanish. I don't know. I think I did. I did pretty well. Did you stay high all day? No, I was high until about lunch, which was perfect. Were you high for that um, po- poetry reading? No, no. I was so nervous for that poetry reading. No. I did not smoke weed before. I, I, for those of you who don't know, I uh, in the English classes in my senior year, they're like we're gonna do a poetry slam. Those of you who want to join, you can. But also, we're just everyone's writing a po- poem for uh, a, uh, like a project or an assignment. And if you want to do it, just submit your name. And so I did it, and they're like, "Yeah, we're gonna go through it." But based on who was performing, they said they did it randomly. But after I saw everybody else perform, they were like, "The kid who was going first has a minute to go." The maximum is five minutes, and most of these kids will go that five. We don't want him to feel bad and have to follow up anybody else in this poetry slam. And they're like, well, you're the sacrificial poet, so the first one's always going to get the lowest score. And then I watched everybody go up there, and I was like, no, I got the lowest score because I definitely had the worst fucking poem. Like, Dude, it was less about the poem and more about you conquering a fear. No, 100%. That's the reason I did it. It's just because I wanted to do something different and break out of the box. Yeah, but, I was really uh, proud of you. Your mom and I were both really proud of you. That you, We knew you hated public speaking. We knew you hated standing up in front of people. We yep. knew you weren't dying to read poetry, but you did it just to kind of prove to yourself you could. And now look that at was, you, man, hopping that on was stage. My ju- that was my junior year, I think, though, because I'm thinking about my English teacher, and my English teacher junior year was Champa, and Champa yeah, was the one right. who do that. Yeah. Um, yes, I did have an English teacher whose name was Mr. Chapa, and I believe he is still at Champs, the school. Dude, how, how was your – so everybody, I forgot to tell you, Jacob hosted the shows this weekend. He's never done that before. He opened oh, the yeah. How was emceeing? How, how was it? How would you feel? I felt good. I think it was fun. I, I will say like we were getting ready to do the Friday show. And they walked in. And we're like, it's just a two man show. And they go, well, in your contract it says your son's hosting. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. Um, and so there's a story that I have that I was like, okay, I guess this is what I'll go up there and do and shoot the shit a little bit with the crowd. I probably did five or seven minutes. You also added in a story that you had never told. Well, that was because I the guy who was filming everything for us was like, hey, I need a buffer. Dude, pretty good. I think I did it well, though. It was quick. It was something real like that we just kind of were like, this is going to be quick. It's going to be to the point. It's going to be. Uh, it's, and it's I'm not going to tell a story right now because he's working on it for stage. Yeah. But it's the story about when I did meet my Cyrus. Which since we just spoke about that earlier on the podcast. Yeah. Uh, it was the first time we actually did meet Miley Cyrus. The only uh, time. Correct. Right? Yeah, the only time. Yeah, right. yeah. That was when we smoked some of Wiz Khalifa's weed, or I didn't. When you smoked some of it. He's, he's done something that's on my absolute bucket list, which is such a bummer. I was 17 when I met him, and I was there. And I was just one year too young. To be smoking weed. With Wiz Khalifa. I was already smoking weed three years prior to that. but you know. That's yeah, just- but I, not live on TV. Or with you. That's right. So You know, you yeah. really – there was – you got to do some pretty fun things. You asked that girl to prom on TV. Home, homecoming. Chelsea homecoming. was really good to you. Tell everybody that story. Chelsea was good. Uh, I asked the girl to homecoming my freshman year of high school, uh, and she pretty much, in layman's term, asked me to do it better. 
Um, and so the girl you asked to homecoming said you need to ask better. That's what right? I just said. Yeah, no, no, it, it, it sounded like I, I didn't think you got the first part of, uh, of it out. I just want to make sure it was clear. I will say something else. I, you, you, you just said everything I said, just so you know. Yeah, I must, you must have broken up because I didn't hear the first part. Um, I will tell you that your generation, you guys were held to a way higher standard for asking. Yeah. Well, also because like – when social media became a thing, pro, like people would call them prom puzzles or like like asking someone to a dance became something giant and extravagant. Everybody would post them on social media. So every year there was this expectation for us guys to be like, oh, you got to do something large because everybody is watching. Um, and granted, I, I set the bar a little too high in my freshman year because when it came to my senior prom – I was at a different school, thank God. So there was like nobody knew about what I had already done. But it was really hard to top. The TV ask? Yeah. Hey, on arguably the hottest TV show at the point in time and in, in history. Not in history, but at that point in time in the timeline, like, yes. like in where yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, yeah, a hundred percent. It was a uh, I set the bar way too high. And you know. But I did also set myself up for success because there was no way she could say no. That's and and if she did, who else would want to go to homecoming with me? A lot of other people. So you know it was it was it was a win-win for me. Yeah it, yeah it, it, was, well. it was you got to do that. You got to sit on my lap during one of the round tables, which yep. was funny. You yeah, it was me there. and then two two infants under the age of one. Jeff Wilde's son and, and Brad Wallach's son. Brad son, right? Mm -hmm. You got to be on After Lately. Yep. Right? I had a couple lines in that. That was fun. Yep. Yeah, yeah, man. That, she was really good to you. That was a really good um, – Yeah, she – she, she Chelsea was always – and always has been like super generous. Um, When I worked on that show, that first show I got after the Joshua show, when I came back from LSU Carbone show, um, she was on it one day. And she was talking to the two main girls in it, and then I came over just to like say what's up. And she saw me through them and legitimately pushed everybody out of the way and came and gave me a hug. And then we started talking for twenty minutes. And Carbone eventually came over and was like, "Hey, we got to film." And she was like, "She was like, will you just, will you just hold on?" And I was like, "It's totally okay. Like, I can talk to you after." Um, but she's always been super, super nice uh, and super sweet. Yo, dude, she was always super kind to our whole family. Very generous, very giving. Um, yeah. I I have nothing bad to say about Chelsea Miller. Me neither. Not one single thing. I know a lot of people are deep in revision yeah. history about – And we know and we know a lot of people who have that history, and that's totally okay. But we are – we will not – at least I will be a part. Dude, is she a perfect person? No. no. Who is? Yeah. 100%. Who is? So you're, you're – like when you're – yeah, you could criticize everybody for something, you know. Oh, yo, and then we got to go. Yeah, we, we've been here for an hour already. That was quick. Dude, I had my first night of my residency here in Vegas. Oh, yeah, I did see a clip about that. I didn't know you were doing weird shit like that. What's the deal? Dude, it was so much fun. It was a – it was – I, I got to tell you, I was I, – I barely posted about it because, you know – I want to figure out what the show is, you know? Right, right, before you go on full out advertising about it. Right, right, right. Legit, people packed that place out, man. It was great. great. It was okay. great. Um, and then when I, when I move there next okay. month, huh? when I move there next month, I'll probably come stop by every 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 time you're there. Yeah, man. They're, we're already talking about moving it from once a month to once a week. That was fast. Dude, this show is going to be... Beep, 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 beep. Yeah, it do, it's going to be outstanding. It's because it's it's like an updated version of the Bonanza Extravaganza I was doing in Nashville. Great, I love it. So it's like that, but with a real Vegas twist to it. Can, can we do our song during it? A hundred percent. You got to remind me about that song, dude. I forgot that I had a song. If I got to be so honest with you, you got to remind me. But also, this wasn't the weekend to do it because Trevor's there. Right, 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 right. So, and also, you were working on some other stuff. But you got to remind me for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we'll we'll talk about it for Charlotte. 
Well, you 100% have to do it for Charlotte. Guys, we're doing a 420 show on Charlotte in Charlotte. Yo, if you want to see I'm me, I'm being stony, stony, stony baloney. Yeah, if you guys want to see me, possibly the highest I've ever been, Charlotte is the place to be. So make you sure should, you're there. You want a good stoner game to play with the audience and maybe yeah, give away I, some weird shit. I agree. If you guys have any suggestions, DM me on Instagram. Oh, this won't be up by. Oh, this might be up by then. This will be up this two week. weeks before Charlotte. Oh, great. Okay. If you have any ideas when you hear this, DM me on Instagram at Jake underscore Wolf and let me know if you have any good ideas. Um, that might be fun for us to do on 420 with the people who are there. Charlotte, I'm we so excited. Do, it's going to be so fun. Should, I think the game should be between us. Or should we involve one audience member, like a trivia, spelling bee? Spelling bee? Would it be crazy if we brought up some furniture, like a chair for one of us to make and see how, far, see how long it would take for each one of us to do it? I think it's a great idea to film, maybe not live, in front of 300 people who just paid to come see us do stand up. Okay, fair enough. Spelling but I just like that idea of filming it. Spelling bee. Um, yeah, something math. Something where we can do jokes. Like, rap, too. like rap, rapid questions might be kind of funny. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah. Well, we're going to do something fun with it. That is coming up. Um, he is in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Um, and then uh, Chattanooga on what, the 15th? Yep. And then Nashville for the Bonanza on the 16th. And then Kid Rock's show on the 18th. Um, and then we are in Charlotte, North Carolina um, from 420 to 422. Uh, just so you know, 422 is 422. So it'll be two days of 420. So we're going to have to do a weird show on that Saturday as well. Just so you Dude, know. you're going to have your first bit of merch there too. Oh, that's right. I will have my first very bit of t-shirts designed by my amazing girlfriend. Um, that will be out there for the first, first time I've ever done merch at all. Um, so I can't wait for you guys to see that design. And I can't wait to see how it looks. Um, comedian, Dude, Josh you. Wolf, you're this way. Thanks, man. Comedian. Shit. Comedian okay. Josh Wolf dot com uh for tour dates. Yeah, see even I you got fucked up on that one. Oh uh, the guys came in to measure for the studio today. It's gonna be amazing. Sweet. Um comedian Josh Wolf dot com for tour dates. tour dates, guys. Um Jacob and I will be all over in May. We're in Raleigh the first week in May, and then we're doing a small t- uh theater tour for the following weekends in May. Yep. Is that right? I think so. And then, Wait, so uh, we're, we're in Charlotte, and then we're in Raleigh back to back weekends. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Hey, listen. Good news, bad news. No, it's not back to back weekends. Oh, is there a space in between? I mean, but yeah. I assume how far is Raleigh from Charlotte? I don't know. I assume it's, it's I, we might weeks. see some of you twice. Yeah, I hope so. But I hope so I hope you know, the week before we go to Raleigh, Dan and I are going to fly back to Boston to see a Celtics game. Brood. It, and hopefully it'll be, it'll be the Celtics Sixers. I'm assuming the Celtics get out of the first round. I'm assuming the Sixers will too. Wait, so you're going to go see a playoff Celtic game knowing what seats you're going to get without me? That's right. That's great. Hey, J- Jake, underscore, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Guys, Josh Wolf well, comedy I'm, and all I'm, socials. I'm, Listen, not even, I'm not even staying for the rest of this. My heart is... Uh, that that is just so disrespectful, ladies and gentlemen. We love all the great comments um, and messages about the show. Do us a favor. Uh, the way we grow it is through word of mouth and you guys, and 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 we'll keep doing these pods. But like, if you, if you know somebody who might enjoy listening or watching, give them a nudge. Let them know. And if you're listening on iTunes, download, rate, subscribe. Leave a comment. Those are huge for us because it moves us up the algorithm. Are you still shaking your head that I'm going to the playoff game and you're not? Yeah, I am. You know how bad I want to leave right now? Like, I can hit that leave studio button. Like It's right there. Like I've been hovering over it this entire time since you Listen, told me that. Dude, I got, I'm going to go hang out with my brother. I want to. Yeah. I want to go to a Celtics game. 
We went to a Celtics game. You could have touched LeBron on the butthole from where we were sitting. Yeah, you, you want to know what else that happened that weekend? Our dog died. That's true. So I'm, you know, pardon me if I want a different memory from a Celtics game. Little Rock. Pardon me. Dude, do you get those videos I send you about those dogs? Yes, and I don't respond to them because every time you send me a dog, a video of a dog, I want the dog, but I can't have them because I already have this little gremlin here who is not friendly with other dogs or people. Yo, Indiana Jones has become a legit menace. Yeah, he can rip open through any crate. I'm going to send you a link for a crate that's indestructible that he can't literally – like he literally won't be able to bite onto. So I'll, I'll send you that. It's, yeah, like he's a giant, really... it's like a legitimate steel block. Guys – he bites the cage door and pulls it in and rips he it rips it inward. Fucking crazy. Yeah, yeah, he's his jaw. You know when we he and I play fetch in the morning, dude. And he looks at me like, hey, I'm gonna let you have the ball. But don't push your luck. Cause sometimes I'll pull for the ball and he's like, nah. I'm like, hey, let me have it. And he's like, nah. Yeah, he's, he's in control. He thinks he is. He's strong. He is. He, I remember when you thought you could beat him in a race. And I could beat you in a race. That's all that matters. You could definitely beat me in a race. I could beat you in a race. Yo, dude, I almost threw up at the gym. Yeah. I, could, you, I, could, I, could, I could sack race. Just I could like run in a potato sack and still beat you in a foot race. I think. You think you could hop and beat me in a race? Maybe. Zero. Percent chance. I will lay whatever odds you want, and I will. You win a hundred. I win a dollar. It's pretty good odds. Mm -hmm. uh, I would first of all. Are you in a sack? Are you in a sack? Or are you hopping? Doesn't matter. You can hop. You don't uh, need to be. Oh, if I can hop without the sack, I'll hop without the sack. You hop without the sack. That sounds gross. You hop without the sack. I will run. I might even be able to run backwards and beat you hopping. I just might have to see if you're able to run and how fast you're able to run at a certain point in time. Well, I can't do, run. Do a little quick one for me by the camera. Just go from wall to wall real quick. Just, you, no, no, like get up and run real quick, just from wall to wall. I just want to see. I can't, you. dude. I almost threw up at the gym yesterday. My legs are so sore. This is why I think I can beat you. My, <laughs> yo, my trainer wrecked me. I'm thinking about getting tra getting a trainer for the three days I'm in town when I move to Vegas. But I also don't know. Only three days? Well, because I'm in town only three days a week. Oh, oh, three days a week. Well, dude, I, I think it's a great idea. They'll bust. But I also own. can't afford your gym, so I'll have to find somewhere else. I would go Planet Fitness. That's probably what I'll do. Yeah. I would go Planet Fitness. Um, I have some ideas about the trainer because you might also – I'm not sure you can afford a trainer. but That's the point. Because I only do it once a week. It's expensive. Ooh, but like yeah, I, I, I worked at LA Fitness. It was very expensive. Yeah. yeah. I, I love it because I, I love doing Pilates and I can't get the workout by myself. But what you might do, Pilates is legit ridiculously long. I know. You say it every time and act like I wouldn't be able to do it. You wouldn't. Okay. Just like you said, I wouldn't be able to do three minutes in the cryo. Listen to me, dude. And I, and I, did it, I did the three minutes in the cryo, 50 degrees colder than what you usually do. In Charlotte, we're going to a Pilates class. If anybody's in Charlotte and knows a good knows Pilates, a Pilates class, class, hit me up. We're going to get this dude. I'm going to have those shattered backboards in Charlotte too. Fuck. <laughs> Yeah, he asked me if there were any shoes that I would want, and I, 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 I mean, there's lots of shoes that I want, but no, um, no, you do what get, get whatever you want. I'll be able to do a Pilates class, easy. We're gonna film that. Okay. Well, I probably won't be able to film it because it'll be other people in there with us, and we'll put it up just in front of the two of us. We'll have to be in the back of the class. Well, we gotta be on a reformer. On a what? Exactly. It's a Pilates machine. Pilates machine? Isn't Pilates like yoga? I mean, you can do Matt Pilates. We could do a Matt Pilates class, I guess. 
it's so much core, dude. Okay. So, so much, everything is core. Okay. Are you rethinking your confidence? Not at all. Okay, I can't wait. You guys, Charlotte, hit hey, us. What do, I, what, what do I get when I prove you wrong? Well, we'll figure it out. You got to buy me a pair of shoes. We'll have to decide what – because if you're doing it wrong and you're cheating, like, you know what I mean? Well, well I'm not going to cheat. I'll do it better than you. No, dude. Oh, yeah. I'm going to tell you something right now. Here's what I know. Hey, remember last time you thought that an in-shape 53-year-old was better in shape than an out-of-shape 25-year-old? There's no doubt I was wrong. But – and cardiovascularly, you're going to crush me. But you know what? You – core? Nah, dude. Okay. Nah. Get ready for this young man energy. Get ready for this young man energy. It's going to be crazy. <sighs> yes, confident as I am right now, all that keeps creeping into my head is how confident I was stepping in the boxing ring too. What did you keep? What did you keep saying to me for the for the day leading up to it? I'm in the what? The best shape of your life. You got creamed. Well, it turns out I could have done I could have done four more rounds, uh, no, and you ba- and you barely got through the third. No, I was gassed. You was were ready gassed. to stop after the first. There's no way I was going to stop after the first, but I was gassed. Oh yeah. Yo, you you but here's the thing, man. Last time you were here, I was like, "Come work out with me and my trainer," and you said no. Yeah, because I didn't want to. Okay. Next time you're here, when you're here, come do a session with us. No, here's the thing. I said no knowing because the last time I did work out with a trainer, I threw up. I don't want to do that again. That I'm I'm just aware. I'm just you know aware of my situation. I'm situationally aware. That going into that again, I might end up with the same result. And guess what? I don't like doing throwing up. I also so, work out kind of angry. Yeah, I hate working out with you. Do you really? Yeah, I've told you this before. Every time you're like, "Let's go to the gym or the hotel," I'm like, "Yeah." Like, well, we don't have to work out together. Yeah, I know. You know, I, I we're, working out with you before it was before the Josh Wolf show was a lot. Sometimes I would take my time getting into my next set and you would just be like, you would do this and be like, like yeah, telling me to pick it up. Yeah. I, no, you and I just work out differently. You, yeah. I could do a workout in 30 minutes, but I like to take my time and make it like an hour and some change. Yeah. It just depends on what workout I'm doing. I can do a 30, I can do an hour, but I do work out angry. Yeah. Like it, you should get some, I would like to see you work out on smelling salts. We should try some smelling salts on camera, huh? I have them. I've you do? Them. Yeah, I've, I used to use them to go to the gym. For real? When I worked lights out, I used to be super tired when I got home. And my ex would go in the morning. She was like, get up at 5 a.m. with me and go to the gym. And I was like, no. Like, I have to go work 12 hours a day running around doing shit. You have to sit at a desk. You right. work out in the morning because I'm not doing that. And so I would try to go after work. And I would keep them in my car. Because I just didn't want to go. So I'd drive to the gym. It all changed after I'd leave work. And I'd sit in my car. And I'd put my headphones in. And before I'd even leave the car, I I would hit a smelling salt. And it would... Where'd you get them? Fucking CVS. Really? Or order them on Amazon. Actually, I think I ordered them on Amazon. I'm doing it. And then I just, I'll bring some to Charlotte. Okay. Just remind me because they're in my bathroom. Stony Baloney 420. If you're in Charlotte, smelly salts. If you're in Charlotte, hit us up above Pilates class. Comedian yep. Josh Wolf for tour date.com for tour dates with all of me with me and Boomer. Um and Josh Wolf, guys, Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. It's Jake Wolf on Instagram. Jake underscore nope. Wolf on switched it. Jake underscore Wolf on Jake Instagram. It's Jake Wolf, Wolf on TikTok. TikTok. And um, also, guys, download, rate, subscribe, comment on the pod. We love you, man. And Jacob Wolf, Hmm. I want to tell you something, and then we'll go. I I like how much you're starting to want 
Like earlier today, I think we can say this. We can cut it if you don't like it. But earlier today, you know, the guy who cuts our clips, mm-hmm. you were like, hey, let's find some clips where I'm doing more talking. Yeah. And, and I like that, dude. I like how you're starting to assert yourself a little bit. I, I notice on the pod you're asserting yourself more. So I think that's awesome. Yeah, I'm starting to talk over you a little more because uh, – or sometimes – not even talk over you, but like there are sometimes where we both have thoughts at the same time. And usually I would stop and let you go, but now I just – you know, I want to try to carry out a little more with the thought that's in my head. Yeah, yep. Um, Appreciate it. Yeah, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm proud of you. That, that – you know, you got to – you got to – Yeah. Assert yourself. So good for yeah. you. And listen, if I, don't, if I don't like it, I'll just mute you. I can do that from here. Yeah, that's fine. Dude, can't wait for the podcast to be set up. Hey, I love you. I will yeah, see you I can when. Hear Indi- I can hear Indiana whining, by the way. Well, um, I'll, I'll see you in Charlotte. I'll see you on the 20th. That's going to be a minute, huh? I think so. I mean, we'll we'll try to podcast next week. Uh, we're going to have some company here. And then uh, Saturday and Sunday is Iman's birthday and then our anniversary. So – Possibly sometime late next week, I'll text you. Half to pod next week. We definitely will. If not, maybe I think let's try and hit it at Monday. Love it. Let me see. Let me see what we're doing Monday. Let me. Let me just. I'll. I'll text you. It's gonna happen next week. But let me just figure out what our days look like. Love you. All right. Love you. Later.